What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Out West with Chris. Today I kind of want to depart from my normal programming. If I even have normal programming, I do so many different things on this channel. But today I wanted to talk about a person. And I'm going to preface this a little bit. Recently in the news there's been, you know, news of a lot of celebrity deaths. Uh, 2016, um, at the end of it, you know, you had George Michael, Carrie Fisher, and Carrie Fisher's mom. I don't remember Carrie Fisher's mom's name. So it seems like now, whenever a celebrity passes away, there's an automatic uh, outpouring of emotional responses on Facebook, on Twitter, and that type of thing. And I really never understood that. I, didn't, I never got it. You know, when a celebrity passed away, I might be like, okay, well, that sucks for their family, and, you know, it's, it's too bad, and, you know, I feel bad for their friends and family, and whatever, you know, and I'd move on with my day without really thinking about it much. I don't know if that makes me cold and callous. I'm not sure. And I guess I've never really understood the, the instant, you know, jump on Facebook and post something. I kind of get it, and I kind of don't. Like, I could see where you could develop a connection with somebody like a celebrity based on, you know, a song they sang or a film, you know, when you hear that they pass away, maybe it makes you reminisce about a time when you were younger, you know, you hear a song and you think about it and, you know, it makes you sad or whatever, or you think about seeing Star Wars for the first time when you were 12 or 13 or, you know, whatever it might be. So I kind of get it. So I kind of had a, a similar situation personally a few days ago, I had heard that a guy that I admired had passed away, and his name was Richard Makowitz. And when I, I think I butchered his name, um, when I had heard that Mac had passed away, I was, I mean, I wasn't like super sad, I wasn't, you know, gloomy or anything, and I wasn't, but I wasn't happy. I was kind of like, I guess my thought was the world is a little bit less better of a place without a guy like that. There are certain people that when they pass away, you know, you just know that the world's missing out on something. And that was kind of my feeling about that guy passing away. So Richard Makowitz, Mac, was a Navy SEAL. After his time in the SEALs, he started doing a lot of um, speaking. And how I came to know who he was was um, the television show Future Weapons on Discovery Channel. And it was a cool show. Like, I thought, man, that dude's a badass. He's got an awesome job. I mean, who wouldn't love going and checking out new firearms and new military technology. There's a clip of him from years ago talking to a young Chris Costa. And if you know who Chris Costa is, he's a, a pretty big name in uh, the firearms culture type fit, shooting sports, that type of stuff. He does a lot of training and helps with development of firearms and, and that type of thing. You know, really cool job. He seemed like a cool guy, but I didn't know the depth of the person. Had no clue, because it's just a television show, right? Until I was driving around one day for work. I'm in sales, so I was out doing my job, driving around, and I was listening to the Jim Rome show. And I'm listening to The Jungle, and then all of a sudden, Jim comes on and says he's having an interview with Mac. And I'm like, oh, that's the dude from Future Weapons, you know? And so I stayed tuned, right? And I listened to the interview, and there were a few things that kind of just stuck to me. I'm gonna play a quick clip of it right now, so let's have a listen. I don't really like the way I feel. I don't really like the way that I see things. I don't really like that dialogue that's always going on in my head. I feel like I'm a little soft. I wanna be that warrior, but I'm just not wired for it. What do you tell that person? Well, first of all, every single one of us has the capability to accomplish anything we want to accomplish. I firmly believe that. I, I, you know, I, I was a, a guy that uh, my teacher once told my, or one of my teachers told my mom, this guy will never amount to anything. He's, you know, and I, I, I really feel that you, every single one of us has that. It's really focusing on the voice or directing that voice toward the thing that you have to get done in that moment and not fixating on the voice that's pulling you away about what you can't do, how small you are, how weak you are, how incapable or how bad the world is. Those voices are the ones that are pulling you away. So that was the interview. That's kind of a portion of what got me hooked. And I'll have links in the description below to uh, two parts of that interview. I think it's worth a listen. So that, that interview inspired me to go purchase a book he had written. The book was called Unleash the Warrior Within. 
And I guess at this time in my life, I mean, this is like 10 years ago, eight years ago. I can't remember when, but um, it was it was quite a while ago where I guess I was kind of looking for direction and inspiration in, in my own life, you know? And I picked up the book and I started reading it. And there, there was some great information in it. On the cover it says, Develop the focus, discipline, confidence, and courage you need to achieve unlimited goals. And this guy's outlook, it was very um, SEAL oriented. I mean, one of his catchphrases is, uh, not dead, can't quit. You're not dead yet, so you can't give up, you can't quit. So in the process of reading the book, and this is the book right here, I picked up some, some stuff that stuck with me. I picked up this interesting method that um, he used when he was in the SEALs of prioritizing tasks. It's called CARVER, and it's uh, an acronym for you know different things that help you kind of prioritize different stuff that you need to do to reach your goal. So CARVER stands for criticality, so how vital is the task to the overall mission, accessibility, how easy is it for me to hit this target? Recognizability, do I know how easy or how difficult it is gonna be to, to finish this task? Do I really know what's involved? Vulnerability, what type of resources do I need to finish this task? The effect of the overall mission, so how is completing this task gonna help me reach my overall goal? And return on effort, so how, how is my time spent gonna be returned to me? If, I, if I'm gonna, am I gonna spend a lot of time trying to finish this task? And is there gonna be a big payoff? Is that payoff gonna come you know, four months from now? Is it gonna come two weeks from now? That type of thing. And this really pertained to my job as a salesperson. As a salesperson, I got so much stuff that's constantly coming at me, and some of it is vital to reach my goals, and some of it is you know, not that critical, and it can be pushed off a day or two. And with all the, the stuff coming at you, you know, you totally have to prioritize what you're gonna do, and keep in mind, is this really vital? Is it important? Is it a good use of my time right now? Because, I mean, time, in everybody's life, time is probably one of the most valuable quantities that we have, is our time. So there's a lot of good information that I picked up, and I picked up, like, you know, he had, cool concepts on how to deal with fear. And that fear is not like, oh, some guy is shooting at me. In his case, that's part of what it was, but it could be it could be anything. Like maybe you're afraid to confront somebody and call them out on the carpet if they're doing something wrong. Or maybe you have, you know, a coworker that, you know, totally pushes you around. How do you deal with the fear of dealing with that person? How do you confront them in a respectful but forceful way? One cool thing about Mac was he started his own kind of martial arts institute, his own training um, type of stuff. And, it, and in the process of the book, he talks about some of his students and some of the fears that they had to overcome and how he would incorporate his time in the SEALs and his time in various martial arts and, and kind of coaching these people and how you could apply some of those same rules to your own life. So one of the things that he talks about is never growing complacent. And I think a lot of the times it's easy for all of us to grow complacent. Like I could grow complacent on my YouTube channel and um, not really push myself or challenge myself. And you know, it's not gonna be the end of the world for me. You know what I mean? But for me to reach my goals that I have within, you know, whether it's my YouTube stuff or you know, my, my full-time employment, for me to reach those goals, I can't be complacent. And if bad crap happens or I have a crappy day, you know, I can't let that affect me tomorrow. Um, I need to never give up, you know, not dead, can't quit. And I need to prioritize my time and, and go forward, keep moving forward. And I found a ton of great information in this book and I actually highly encourage you guys to go read it. Um, go read it. I'm gonna have a link in Amazon where you can buy the book if you're interested. Um, like I said before, it's a great book and it's written by a guy who, 
who I think is a good guy. You know, I don't know him. Um, I've seen some speeches he's given, some interviews he's given, and I'm pretty damn sure he was a man of substance. So to kind of circle back, like I didn't admire this guy. I, I thought he was a cool dude, a badass. You know, when I first saw his, his television show, um, I respected him for his service, but I didn't really have this admiration and you know, deep respect for him as a person until I read his book. And that's where I started to see the depth of the person. So I guess to circle back even further, like I can appreciate where people come from now a little bit more when you know, somebody that they respected and whose artwork or um, whose song or whose film they, they really enjoyed and connected with passes away. Like I get it now a little bit more. I don't really get some of the you know blubbering um, that kind of goes on. I think some of that's for show personally, but I get that it did impact you. I get that that you connected with that person, um, and now you feel a sense of grief that they're no longer with us. For me, I feel like the world's a little worse off not having that guy in it to to be an example for other men. It's kind of the same way I felt when, you know, Chris Kyle passed away and I, I'd read his book too. Him, you know, that was just so tragic how that all happened. So it was a little bit different, but I think you kind of get the picture. I think you get where I'm going with this. So I'm going to close now, but before we close, two things for you to, to chat about in the comment section below. Who is a person that when they passed away, you thought in your head, man, the world's a little bit worse off. You know, that's, that's totally our collective loss. Who was that person and why? The other thing, let me know in the comments below. Um, I read a lot. You know, I got a lot of books. I like to read. Um, I'm reading a cool book about Kit Carson right now, and that dude was a badass too. But do you want me to do, like, book reviews or bring up books every now and then? Is this something that interests you? I hate to sound like I'm starting a book club because that's just lame. <laughs> it's totally lame. But anyways, is this something that interests you? Do you guys want me to uh, point out some good books that are out there um, that kind of focus towards guys and you know that type of thing? Is it something you're interested in? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're new to the channel, Take a look around. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Share this video, you guys. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I need your help. So please share this video if you want to. And as always, thanks for getting out west with Chris.